morning, Patty Harvath. Patricia Ann, is it? Patricia Lucille. Patricia Lucille Harvath, mm-hmm. yes. Same. My middle mm-hmm. name's for my grandmother. Oh, how lovely. Mm-hmm. You knew her well. I did not. No. My grandmother died before I was born. Oh, and, and was she also from Dearborn? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, before we get started, I need to say this, not only personally, but I think I speak for many, 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 if not all of us. Thank you for saying yes just about a year ago. Yes. It'll be a year in... We, year in, it was a year in February you said yes. Yes. But you activated that yes. July 2nd <laughs> was the actual <laughs> ritual, the movement <laughs> into leadership. So, with yes. With eyes wide open. With wi- eyes wide open and nervous and scared. Yes. And, yeah. But and you good. have enjoyed every minute. I have. Mm-hmm. I have to say that I love, I love the general counsel. I could not ask for better people Mm -hmm. to spend six years of my life with Mm -hmm. and to work together for the congregation. Did you Um, know any of them personally before? um, Not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Like I I knew about them or I knew them casually. But, you know, as far as a a relationship per se, Mm -hmm. no. Oh, you're very fortunate. Yes. Yes, you're very, very fortunate. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm very and what, what, is, what is your primary focus as a council person? As a council person? Let's see, it is many and varied. Um, the focus is a lot on Dominican life. So, mm-hmm. of course, I have the formation piece, which mm-hmm. is, you know, our initial mm-hmm. formation um, associate program, Dominican volunteers. Oh and I'm on the programming committee as well as the corporate board for it so that I can add a little bit more to the nitty-gritty of running the program. Um, Weber Center is also part of my responsibility. Oh, very varied. Yes, um, Dominican Alliance. There are different committees. I'm on the Committee for Formation for Sponsorship, so that's always fun. Um, oh it yeah. sounds like meetings. And there's a lot of meetings, <laughs> yes. a lot of meetings. Well, you mentioned the Dominican volunteers. Is there not a volunteer on campus? Yes, now? Holly Salmons, working in permaculture and also with Carlene in the Literacy Center. Oh, my. So and she has had a little bit of part-time when she can get away mm-hmm. from the other. But Does she live on campus? Uh, she lives at Siena House, which is, you know, kind of across the street from the campus. And but. Called Formation House at some point. Called Formation in life. House. Yes. So your formation began in, in uh, what, what year, Patty? I entered September 1967. Oh, my. Just before. On the cusp of all the changes. <laughs> oh. So you were here for our 1968 chapter of renewal. Yes. yes. <laughs> Standing in Ledwidge up on the balcony looking down. Oh. At the sisters, and you were a postulant at that point. Yes, I would imagine. Mm-hmm. And were you living in Weber? Uh, we had moved over a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was but a couple where, months later. Where did you first? When we first came, we were on fourth floor oh. of the mother house, oh my. Saint Rita's. And many of you? We mm-hmm. were fifty oh at that time, mm-hmm. and Saint Rita's had eighteen beds in it, and I was an only child. So I went from my princess bedroom in Dearborn (laughs) to 17 other human beings in the same room with me, whom I did not know. So that was the adjustment to religious life. That was a renewal in itself. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my, my. So then, Gloria, hallelujah, when you moved to Weber and had your own room. Then we had our own room at Weber. Yes. yes. Did the all 50 move over? As well, at that says? point, we were diminishing a bit, so it might have been about 40, so mm-hmm. coming over. Okay. So then your novitiate then? Was at Weber, at Weber with Carol Johannes. Okay. We were her first group. Oh, and her favorite, I'm sure. I am sure. <laughs> There could be no doubt. <laughs> and, and could you name a few of the sisters that are in your In my uh, crowd? Mm-hmm. Yes. We have Mary Beth Howell, mm-hmm. Maureen Comer, Sharon Spambauer, Lee Esnard, Noreen Sharp, uh, 
and Carol Jean Gesterke. Oh my, from 52. Seven of us. Seven, seven. Mm -hmm. Karen Fisk used to be in your group. Karen Fisk was in that group. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Does anyone keep in contact? Yes, Carol Jean does. I think Mary Beth does. Uh, once in a while, I'll hear from her, but well, like at Christmas. We Easter. send her our, our best if she yes. happens to be listening. Yes, yes. definitely. So what, what was your uh, second year of ministry uh, in the congregation? I mean, you did you make your... Uh, first vows here? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. I made first vows here. And then my first mission was Blessed Sacrament Toledo. And I did student teaching mm -hmm. there for half a year. Yes. And then was assigned, um, I think I had second grade after that. Uh, who was your principal? Jane Martin Quirk. Oh, lives right here on the yes. floor. Yes. yes. So, I understand she was a wonderful. She was absolutely principal. wonderful. We were 12 sisters mm -hmm. at Blessed Sacrament, and that was my first place. And so you were young, young. Yes, I was like all of 20. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I know Sharon Spanbauer talked about going to school, living in community, yes. and working in H Hudson's, I think it was. Uh, no, that was Maureen. Maureen went back to her job at Hudson's oh. in the accounting department. And I think Sharon was in an office up oh, I, on 94. It was the Goodyear Tire Company. Oh, oh my. I think she yeah. worked there for a while. I worked at Best & Company for one year in the credit department. Now, I know that's hard to believe I'd be in the credit department since math is not my forte, but um, I did okay. And <laughs> the second year, I worked at Sherwood Forest Library on Seven Mile and Livernoy taking two buses from Mercy College to work and then back to school again. Uh, so that was an experiment in the congregation. It was right? an experiment, <laughs> I yes. hope it didn't last too long. No, just the two years, basically. So, <laughs> so you learned so, a lot about yourself and the others you lived with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, uh, do I belong in religious life or not? Right. I mean, that was a... a you, and in the meantime, you're still discerning. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. So... Come final, what happened? <laughs> I made finals in Puerto Rico oh. in 1977, and it was wonderful. And I knew that's what I wanted to do with my life. Oh, beautiful. Um, you know, there was a sense of loving God and wanting to serve the poor, basically. And, and that, that was when we had open placement. So yes. So you, you chose to go to yes. Puerto Rico. Right. Because there was a need. You taught there, I presume. I did my first year. We, Ann Liam and I were teaching at Sagrada Corazon. It was our academia there. And, but at the same time, we were working out in Trujillo Alto in pastoral ministry up in the mountains. We had five mission chapels. The people agreed to give us a car and to build us a house. And that was our payment yes. for being there. And so we had to wait for the house to be built. Finally, we moved in uh, right next to a chapel. And then I uh, found a, a ministry doing teaching in Head Start, five-year-olds, out in the Confos. Loved it for eight years with the little ones. And then Ann was doing some part-time work also in the town. So. How oh, beautiful. But, yeah, we basically work with catechists, leaders in the community, youth groups, training training the lay people. And we did share faith and life, definitely. What, what a privilege. It was. Yes. It was. So I was thrilled to make my final vows there. Now, we talked earlier about your about Dearborn. Is that yes. where you met the Adrian Dominicans? It is. I had the Adrians at St. Alphonsus, Dearborn, 12 years. Oh, my grade school and high school both. Mm -hmm. Some, someone might say you were brainwashed. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I really felt uh, I accompanied the sisters in one sense in their ministry because they were very inclusive of us, you know, participating in activities, especially in the 60s. Um, the sisters really got us involved in social justice, My. especially in the Detroit area, mm -hmm. going to meetings, um, being with other high schools, that were different than us, and that was a it was a good initiation into another you know aspect of life. Well, you mentioned you were an only child. How how were, how did your parents accept 
My parents were thrilled, yes. actually. Uh -huh. They wanted me to be happy, and if this was going to make me happy, they supported me. They loved the sisters. They came, you know, as passions, we could have visitors every month, mm -hmm. faithfully here every month. And then anybody that didn't have any parents to visit them, of course, I took them, you know, with yes. my parents. So my parents became their parents. Oh. Um, but they, yeah, they supported me. Were you able to be with them in, in their final days? Yes, and mm -hmm. that was a gift, truly. Mm -hmm. I was with my dad when he died, um, you know, holding his hand, and then and at home. It was, he was at home at that mm -hmm. point. And then my mom, I was with her at, in the hospital also. Did they die around the same time? or No. no. My dad died in 78, very oh, young, young, 64. Yeah. And he had lung cancer mm -hmm. and suffered tremendously. Um, my mom lived 17 more years without my dad, which we think is a miracle because she was very dependent mm -hmm. on, on my dad. And... Uh, but she was a feisty lady. So she kind of managed to do life here and live for another 17 years. And then she was 86 when she died. Oh, and you were able to be with her? I was with her in the hospital when she oh, died. what a gift. It really was, mm -hmm. it really was. And to be able to say to both of them, it's okay, ah. you know, it's okay. That you'll be okay. And I'll be, be okay. okay. I, that was their concern, of course, well, of you know, course. it's an only child. and. Um, yeah, to just assure them that, you know, I'll be fine. Where along the line did you learn uh, Spanish? While you were teaching in Puerto Rico? No, actually, I studied it in high school for two years. Loved it. Who was your Spanish teacher, do you remember? Mr. Milo. Milo. Mm -hmm. well, God bless Mr. Milo. Mr. Milo, he was great. And then um, I decided I wanted to study it in college. When I was in high school, I thought of going to the UN to be an interpreter. That was what I wanted to do. Fascinating. I thought, I can do this, you know. And, uh, but God had another little tug in my heart to, to follow, another call. But I did study Spanish then, both at Siena and Mercy College, and got my degree in it. So I could read it very well, my grammar was fine. Speaking was so-so, understanding was so-so, so once I got to Puerto Rico, they, um, yeah, I had to learn to speak fast. And Sister <laughs> Aunt Liam was already there, fluent in Spanish, Yes, right? Sister Aunt Liam was there. Mm -hmm. so. Now, uh, I know there's a song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, but you, you, I believe, must have left your heart in the islands. I did. Yes. I think I did. But, you know, as I reflect back, Jody. I think I left my heart in many, many places. I've loved every place I have been, uh, without a doubt, and loved the people. Mm -hmm. You know, loved what I did, but most especially, I loved the relationships that were formed, and I still have. So um, I left a piece of my heart, I think, all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> you spent a brief time in Peru. Yes, it was two months. Um, with whom were you living? That was with Mary Kay Dwylis, yes, Kenneth, yes. Pam Millenbach, oh. and then Teddy McKenna was up the road a little piece living with the Mary Nollers. So I split my time between Mary Kay, Pam, and Teddy. Oh, wow. and, uh, it was great. A I rich loved time. it. Mm -hmm. it a, a dangerous time. time, though, correct? Exactly. The Sendero Luminoso were very uh, prevalent. Say that the, again. Sendero Luminoso, the Shining Path, it was a terrorist oh. group in Peru, mm -hmm. and they were all over the country, and there were bombings, and you know, it was, it was pretty serious and dangerous. So in my discernment, I would have loved to have gone back, but it was very difficult for my mom. Mm -hmm. I knew she was um, nervous. <laughs> she knew you were hearing bombs. Every yes, day. and there was no phone, there was no way to get out of the country quickly. Um, in case anything would ever happen to my mom, and that was a priority. Did so. eventually all the sisters leave? Eventually we, they did, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through the because years. Because of the danger. The I danger think. was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty prevalent, mm -hmm. yeah. And then your ministry in the islands, how long, how long were you there, Patty? I think it was something like 15 years between oh. the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. Uh, so. Well, you had a chance to be innovative <laughs> in San yes. Domingo, yes. In Santo Domingo, they went to the opposite end of the spectrum. We're teaching 
young adults, young women, actually, um, that were interested in theological education. They were leaders in their compo areas. They were catechists, youth group leaders, um, you know, worship committees, but they needed some more faith education. So we designed a program, I did actually, um, as my master's degree, um, to do lay ministry formation. And so it was a three-year program, which the congregation really sponsored. And the first year I taught um, the Gospels. The second year was counseling skills as well as social justice. And the third year was spirituality and Psalms. And I traveled to like four different geographical areas teaching. And some of the sisters would come and work with me. Arlene Kazmatka came down. She lived with us for a while. Anna, I lived in Harbacoa with Anna. Anna Felice. Felice, mm -hmm. yes. So um, that was exciting. Kitty Bethe was around too. So that was good. So we had, you know, it was a nice group of sisters. That um, sounds, sounds ex exciting. Yeah. So we had, we had a lot of nice support from the sisters themselves who would come and be present for big gatherings to get all four geographical areas together on a weekend in a retreat house. All the sisters would come and be present. And then we'd work with the girls. Was this a congregation supported? Yes. It was a congregation supported mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. And when they finished those courses, sounded like six courses, mm -hmm. how did you celebrate that? We had like a little graduation, a ritual, which we would do basically, you know, in the living room and someone's house, or whatever. And um, very simple. Nadine Foley came at the end of one of the, the sessions. She was the prioress. She the was the prioress. So um, I just remember it was very nice, and very simple. And we have a nice meal, of course, you know, rice and beans. <laughs> and did they get a certificate? I yes, mean, they did receive a certificate. And it had, you know, like the congregation, the Agent Dominican Sisters, you know, certifies that you have completed this program. Uh, they must have been very, very proud. It was very important for women to have that, you know, it meant a lot. Um, yeah. Who, who was the overseas person from the congregation in the position of? Uh, Vicarus at that point, it was Vicarus. Was it Vicarus? Mm -hmm. Mary Lou Putro. Oh, but she lived in the Detroit area. Yes, yeah. yes. And then Pat Johnson came after uh -huh. They both were encouraging with what mm -hmm. you were doing. Extremely, That's, extremely. I bet the bishop was too. Yes, Bishop Flores in La Vega uh -huh. Diocese was just a kind, kind man and compassionate and, uh -huh. you know, just supported our congregation, mm -hmm. loved us, loved the program. <laughs> he was like, this is great. Did you have the privilege of working with any other bishops throughout your years? Um, in Cleveland, Bishop Pilla. I was doing Hispanic ministry for the Diocese of Cleveland, so I saw Bishop Pilla a lot. Again, very supportive, loving, kind, kind man. Um, and affirmative. Of, extremely. Of Any mm -hmm. activities we had in Hispanic ministry, he was there. My. He was there. And if he couldn't be there, he would send someone. You know. That entailed a lot of travel, too. I that think. did. Oh. We had seven parishes oh. in Cleveland which were Hispanic. Some were in outlying areas. Others were basically in the inner city of Cleveland. But uh, did, you, did you ever face the seriousness of the immigration problem today? Yes, and that was even way back. That was in the 2000 yeah, time, 2001, 2002. Uh, Worcester, uh, Ohio, was where Smuckers the um, jelly and jam places. And of course, they had a lot of immigrants working in that area, and it was not very safe. So we worked with some lawyers, social workers, um, you know, peace and justice people uh, as a diocese and help them, you know, make connections, um, you know, be a respite for them when they needed to just come and, and be somewhere. Our offices were available. For them, so. Just to feel safe. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on a long time. Mm -hmm. I bet you loved that that work. I did. It was I kind did. of a continuation of your. Uh, it was. A, <laughs> it definitely was. The people were just so good. I I think I missed how many years you were there. 
In Cleveland, mm-hmm. eight years. Oh my. Mm-hmm. my. And then the congregation tapped you on the shoulder. <laughs> they did and literally said, Come to, to New Orleans. Oh. I didn't even know where New Orleans was on a map. I was like, <laughs> where? <laughs> You miss so, the geography. Yeah, I miss ge- I was never into <laughs> geography or history as a child, you know, which I regret now. But it's like I could never be bothered. I was into English and Spanish, you know, and writing. And it's like, no, not so much geography. But um, Was this pre-Katrina uh, or This was post- after Katrina. The flood, yes. The, it had hap- Katrina happened in 2005. Mm. And Donna Markham, at that time, the prioress, was asking people to consider going and helping. And uh, so I got a call, and I said, well, Donna, I, I'd love to go, but we just put a pastoral plan into action mm-hmm. for the next five years here in Cleveland. Let me work it one year, get them going, and then I'll go. So I did. Mm-hmm. I waited a year, got the people ready. They were carrying on the programs well, and I said, okay. I can move. So I went to New Orleans in 2008. And did you build houses? Is that what you I mean? did not. Mary Keefe was building the houses. <laughs> <laughs> Mary was there first mm-hmm. with Diane Odette. Oh, okay. um, so I came, yeah, a little few months later. And I hoped to work in Hispanic ministry, of course. And as I went around to the parishes, it was very difficult because it had been after Katrina, they weren't organized. They literally were still floating with how do we survive and have a mass even. So um, I just was around and then I went to a St. Dominic celebration with the St. Mary's Dominican sisters. And um, St. Mary's School, is that correct? Well, it, they had the school, and then this was their mother house oh. right there oh. uh, near the campus. Oh. And Mary Keefe and myself and Diane, we all went to the dinner. And um, one of the sisters, who I knew from formation, said to Cindy Thomas, who is and was the president of St. Mary's Dominican High School, why don't you ask Pat about the high school and working there? And I just looked at <laughs> Cindy Thomas and I said, you know, I'm really not interested in high school and much less in administration. And she said, well, that's fine. Why don't you just come tomorrow, though, and we'll show you around. You can see the school. And I thought, okay, I'll do it with the sense of this is a new culture. These are new people. This is a good opportunity to learn about the city. And so I went with that intent, certainly never to work in a high school. So when I walked in the door, I could palpate the Dominican spirit. Wow. And I fell in love, literally, wow. with the school oh. and the people. Mm-hmm. They were just wonderful. and so Dominican. Oh, my. So then, um, it Cindy, I, it was. It was interesting. Um, Cindy then offered me the position of working in a leadership team with her and the others with the Dominican charism to you know, bring about the Dominican charism on all levels of the high school, faculty, staff, you know, students mm-hmm. certainly, uh, which I loved. Did they have a board also? Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. We, had a, we had a nice yeah. board. I bet Pat Brady was there at the time. Pat Brady came right after me mm-hmm. a little bit, yeah. She was still with Das and mm-hmm. um, she had her office there, which was nice. Oh, that's So great. I'd see Pat almost every day. Mm-hmm. And she's moving to campus. You know? She is indeed. Yes. yes, yes. yes. Uh, so, did you ever uh, take the students on a, what shall I say, a sightseeing trip? A sightseeing trip, a, trip, <laughs> a mission trip? Mission trip. I did. Uh, after about four years, and again, this truly was the Holy Spirit, I asked Cindy, I said, you know, let's try and do a mission trip. and. She said, well, let's think about it a bit, you know, and is it dangerous? No, it's not bad, you know, I've been there, we can do this. And it, I had just walked out of her office and one of the dads went in to see her, Steve Valdez, and he said, Cindy, got to do a mission trip. All the other high schools are doing this, we got to do this. And she said, you know, Sister Pat was just in here talking about, I thought, now this is, yes. Mm -hmm. So she said, you talk to Sister Pat and 
We did it. The rest is history. The rest is yes. history. Yes. Oh, my. Were you in the Fundacion area? Yes, Fundacion in Bani mm -hmm. at the School of Fe y Alegria. Mm -hmm. And Sister Basilia is the principal. And Ada is there as a counselor. Mm -hmm. Luci's there working. So. And is the, it's wonderful. is the school flourishing? Yes. I mean, Maureen, you know, and Renee did a wonderful mm -hmm. job. And they started with what? 30 some people, if even that. Yes. And it's now almost 1,700 students. Oh my. It's huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And the town itself has benefited. Has flourished as far as the pharmacy and medicine and all of that. Mm -hmm. They trained the women so well. Mm -hmm. What did the students do while they were there? They worked in the classrooms. Oh. They had to prepare little lessons. Some of them knew Spanish, some did not. You know, mm -hmm. I said, well, good luck. So, <laughs> <laughs> but they manage, and that, that's the joy of it, is trying to communicate, and as well as the students there, trying to communicate with our students, and great fun, great learning. Oh. Um, and then we would visit the sick in their homes. One day we did that. Um, that probably was life-changing for the students. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, one girl was a professional ballerina. She was a junior at that time, and she said, when I graduate, I would like to do um, dance therapy with handicapped children. So she changed her whole career around. Wow. Wow. And the mom and dad were then looking for a college that would do that, mm -hmm. you know, for her. So the parents were extremely mm -hmm. grateful, extremely. I remember the one dad said, I don't know what you did, but you changed the life of my princess here. Oh, my. <laughs> oh how beautiful. As I didn't do anything. That's, well, that's, they saw poverty that's God. like they hadn't seen before, I'm that's sure. Right. And then we do faith reflection, you know, mm -hmm. theological reflection. Mm -hmm. That's very important. And probably important. some of them came with you to Adrian for the... For the preaching conference, preaching conference. which is another great experience. It's for juniors. In, in juniors and seniors we would bring mm -hmm. with us, yeah. And we had quite a process of... Nominations from faculty, they had to be nominated. Mm -hmm. I'd go through those with the campus minister, then we'd interview them, uh, and then we did a selection. It was pretty serious. Yeah. So but it grew through the years. It had a great reputation. You know, the girls and were wonderful. Something they were seeking. Yes. 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 How yeah. beautiful. Definitely. Yeah. For Definitely. all the, the um, women and men and children that have touched your life. What have you learned from them that you'd like to tell the rest of the to world? To tell the rest of the world. <clears throat> what I learned um, in each situation is the importance of relationships, how important people are, and to be present to people in the moment, because you may not have that moment again with them. And, and there's a reason that they're in your and path. there's a reason that yes. they're Yes, right. Well, God bless you, Patty. Thank and, you. And for the next uh, five years. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh, you are welcome. It's, it's a bit different from being on mission and now on the yes. General Council. Would you agree? I would agree 100%. <laughs> um, it's, the learning curve is very steep, but it's okay. And I bring my life experience, you know, and I feel... That's important for the congregation. Mm -hmm. That's the gift I can offer the congregation is my life experience and, and how varied it is. And it's so. and speaking for all of us, so. correct? Yes. Yes, God definitely. bless you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs>